Yo, cryptocurrencies are the fastest growing asset class under the sun. I find it borderline irresponsible to not be exposed to that industry right now or to not even be educated on what all this is about, what's the whole purpose and the ideology behind cryptocurrencies. And as we're in such a fast moving industry, we're also seeing a narrative shift for certain crypto projects. For example, Bitcoin originally started as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, right? Now that narrative has changed towards a store of value and digital gold, which is why I believe there's a new chance for alternative cryptocurrencies, AKA altcoins to occupy that niche. And that's why today's video is around my favorite cryptocurrency in the field of payments. And that is Nano, right? Nano is my coin of choice when it comes to that. It's also my strongest bet. I actually just started to stack Nano coins um, a few days ago, actually, because I really, really think that Nano has a very good shot, is in a great position, in a great spot. And I want to shed a bit of light on what Nano is about, why I'm so excited about it, and why you should definitely put it on your watch list and also start to conduct your personal due diligence. And if you're excited about that, and if you like that, then make sure you hit up the subscribe button, share this video, like it. Also make sure that you watch this entire thing. Introducing Nano. Nano utilizes an innovative technology called the Block Lattice, which works without a mining process, resulting in transactions of any size being processed instantly with no fees. There's no limit to how many transactions can occur simultaneously. Nano is the digital currency designed to function on a global scale. Nano's vision is to bring digital currency to the masses. We are focused on creating innovative applications that put Nano at the heart of people's everyday lives. And this is just the beginning. All right, so like I said in the intro, the original purpose of Bitcoin was actually to act as peer-to-peer -peer cash, right? The whole point was basically to establish a, a decentralized currency that can be used actually to pay for things, right? To pay for things, but also to send money around the world um, near instant and also at very, very low fees, right? And of course, initially that worked out, right? Because there was also very low traffic, right? We didn't have millions of users congesting the blockchain. And it, initially it did work, right? It did work and people did use it to pay for things, right? But over the years, uh, development on the mainnet on Bitcoin has slowed down, which also meant that uh, increased network activity would lead to a congestion of the Bitcoin blockchain, right? And that's one of the main reasons why, for example, we have Bitcoin Cash today, right? So Bitcoin Cash is a fork of Bitcoin and is actually um, implemented uh, a block size increase which enables much faster transactions. Hence, the transaction costs are much lower on Bitcoin Cash. And that's why it's also called Bitcoin Cash, right? Because the community actually thought like, hey, we should pursue the original vision of Bitcoin, which was cash, mm -hmm. right? As stated in the headline of the Bitcoin white paper. The, the whole um, development scene in Bitcoin kind of like split up and divided, right? A lot of people called Bitcoin Cash a scam and a money grab and whatnot. And that even led to further forks, right? We have Bitcoin SV now, we have different variations of it but that's a lot of buzz a lot of hype from my point of view one of the core questions that came up after all that um, separation and division of the crypto bitcoin community was basically well if bitcoin really evolves and fosters that space as a, a store of value right as digital gold that means that it becomes unusable to spend right and that's actually also the main purpose for for bitcoin today and the main sales pitch or the main narrative is just buy bitcoin stack sets and don't ever spend them right this incentivizes people to spend it okay so it incentivizes them to hold it because we can anticipate that the value is going to go higher plus we're actually getting punished if we want to move it because the transaction cost is very very high now nano comes in as one of the payment coins that really tries to tackle that problem, right? And really is purpose-built to act as a payment currency and as a uh, fee-less transaction medium that we can use to really send money and value in real time with no fees. It's also very important to point out that Nano is not built on a blockchain, right? So Nano has two purposes from my point of view, um, from an investment thesis, right? The first one is that it's my bet 
on payment currencies, on the sector of actual utility coins to use as a medium of transaction, right? And Nano is super efficient in that field. We're going to look into some statistics later on. And the second bet I'm taking is as I buy Nano is on uh, directed acyclic graphs, right? On DAX, because DAX is a different architecture than blockchains. So in fact, Nano is not built on a blockchain. It's rather built on a DAC, right? And we've seen it, for example, with IOTA. We've seen it on Hedera Hashgraph, which is also a coin I'm super bullish on. But um, Nano has also pioneered that field of DAX. And I think we're going to see more and more concepts of uh, DAC architectures out there. I think Casper Labs, which is going to launch pretty soon, is also built on a DAC. And Ethereum 2 is also designed more and more as a DAC, right? So you're basically splitting up um, components of the blockchain into smaller ecosystems that can scale much faster in that way. So those are the two main reasons why I'm buying Nano. So that's why I think it is super important to at least evaluate alternatives of cryptocurrencies that try to become pure payment coins, right? Pure medium of exchanges, right? That people can actually use to send and not just to save. And first things first, if we look at Nano here on CoinGecko uh, with the coin ticker NANO, it's currently ranked on 89 here and trades at $5.07 with a market capitalization of nearly 700 million US dollars and a trading volume of 30 million dollars, right? Also very important to point out here that all of the coins that exist, which is 133,248,290 are already in circulation, right? And it's very cool because what they did when they launched the cryptocurrency that Nano did not have a token sale, right? They didn't conduct an ICO, even though they got live in, I think, uh, late 2017 or early 2018. And um, at that time, crypto was super hot, but they didn't jump on the ICO train, right? What they did instead is to get the currency out into the community is they um, incentivize people to solve captchas, right? To basically click a few clicks on your, on your mouse and then you would receive Nano. So that's how they got all the coins in circulation. And it's really, really cool uh, concept and model. There is the Nano Foundation um, that is still active and we'll look into that in a second. But from a coin distribution point of view, it's super um, fair as in how people could get access to the coins early on. Now, if we look at the historic data, we can see that the all-time high of Nano was at 33.69 US dollars. And by the way, back then the project was called Rayblox, right? Rayblox, um, and they did a rebrand early 2018, I guess, um, to Nano. But before then, it was, it was called Nano uh, Rayblox, and I think Rayblox was even in the top 20, if I'm not not mistaken, by then back then. So that's important to point out here. Well, and what we can see here is that Nano has been performing incredibly in December of 2017. It basically just shot up within that month from 12 cents or 10 cents all the way up to $33, right? And that is a 300X. That is incredible, right? So Nano has done it once. The question is now, can Nano do it twice? And if we look at the time, um, obviously the bear market has been tough, has been rough, right? It uh, basically dried out the entire um, gains here. Uh, we went back to, I think here in uh, March, 2020, we had uh, 35 cents per nano which was pretty low but now we're seeing especially here in recent months um, since december of 2020 january has been an incredible month for nano uh, it has woken up again right it has woken up and it's trading at uh, 70 uh, seven dollars 52 cents at the peak just a few days ago so that is really really interesting like if you want to start investing into cryptocurrencies now you have to look at those old projects that have still survived the bear market and still have very active communities and have a product market fit, right? And in my opinion, Nano provides all of that, right? If you look at a chart, this thing is woken up, right? It's, it's not gonna go to zero anytime soon unless they get hacked or unless somebody sells the entire supply. But if you look at a chart, it's obvious that this thing has woken up and it's most likely going to reach new all-time highs because that's what all the other coins have done, right? Um, Bitcoin has done it, um, Ethereum has done it, uh, Cardano has just done it actually. So it's super important to, to look at the charts, look at historic data and see 
what is possible. Now, from a utility perspective, I think Nano is the ultimate payment coin, right? I've been using it over the past couple of months whenever I had set cer uh, certain giveaways or whenever I just wanted to, you know, send somebody crypto, right? And it's super easy. All you got to do is download the Natrium wallet, which is the native wallet um, of Nano. You set up an account, write down your seed phrase, and boom, you can receive and, and uh, send Nano. It's really, really simple to do. And it's basically the entire purpose of the project, right? It makes money efficient for more equal world, simple to pay with, easy to accept and open to all, right? It's a very inclusive, open uh, currency system that just works, that has proven to be working and it's fearless. Okay, and this is also one of the key aspects that I wanna emphasize in this video, because I think a lot of people think like, well, well, if it's fearless, you can basically congest it, right? You can basically spam the network. But in Nano, and that's the genius twist that they have implemented, is that they have a hybrid solution of proof of work uh, and proof of stake. So all that the proof of work component does in the Nano system is act as a spam protection, right? As a spam protection uh, mechanism. And that is super cool um, because other than, for example, EOS, which is also fearless, but their spam protection is much more user unfriendly and it's much more exclusive. But the way they protect themselves from spams is that you have to pay a small fee when you open an EOS account, right? On Nano, you don't have to do that. You can just literally download it and all the other things get done behind the scenes, right? So that's maybe something we can look into uh, the next weeks, how the technology function functions behind the, the scenes. But all in all, it's very user-friendly and inclusive, and you don't have these high entry barriers that, for example, EOS has, right? Now, another thing that they have implemented is something that they call an open representative system. And that basically means that whenever there's some sort of dispute or some sort of controversy or some sort of like problem on the uh, on the network um, people can vote representatives who will then resolve it right and every merchant for example or any company that wants to accept nano is basically incentivized to become a representative right to build a community that would vote for them um, and help uh, like give them voting power in the end of the day right and I think up until around a year ago or something, um, obviously the Nano Foundation had most of the voting power, but I think over the time that has now more diluted. And that's actually one of the main goals right now of the foundation, of the community, is to further dilute the voting power so that you have a more decentralized governing body, more decentralized governing system, right? And here on the website, you can also see the um, representative landscape, right? How many are there? What's their... Um, kind of like voting power, voting weight, and uh, how many delegators do they have, right? And also their uptime. And you can see, I think those guys are probably the, the founders and the, you know, leaders of the project because they only have eight delegators, but they have almost 20% of all the voting power, right? Um, and 100% uptime. So these guys are probably the founders and the owners. Then you have Kraken as an exchange, which has um, 5,300 delegators. Um, and then you have the Nano Wallet, you have Binance, uh, 42,000, Nano Foundation, right? You, you can go down the list. Natrium is a wallet, um, exchanges, and uh, also independent communities, right? I would love to see all those numbers much more diluted, right? Of course, because otherwise you're ending up having a system that still can be centrally governed. So all in all, I think it's great to be able to publicly track that. Uh, in uh, literally two minutes, you can see how is it developing. And over time, you will also see how is the voting weight being diluted, right? So that's something to definitely keep an eye on. They have a huge community around the world, which is, by the way, also one reason why I'm so bullish on them. For example, in Venezuela, they have a dedicated account and um, a lot of adoption there um, going on. Personally, I know a lot of people that live in Venezuela and they all heard of Nano, right? There's um, communities that are building there. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, people educating um, merchants, but also companies and whatever to further uh, accelerate the adoption of Nano in such regions, right? Because that's exactly where you need something like that, right? Because in countries where you have strict capital controls, you need to have alternatives, right? You can't rely on the central authorities, on the governments, on the central banks 
to um, you know to hopefully one day um, enable transactions, remittances, payments, right? Um, and Nano fixes problems there, right? So that's why I'm so bullish on on that as a use case because I think it's also super important and helpful for the people there. And I think it's actually great to speculate on the price and sure, we all want to make money, but also um, we shouldn't forget the whole utility aspect, right? And Nano fixes uh, a lot of problems, um, financial inclusion, right? Um, Feeless transactions, uh, more efficiency uh, to, to payments and remittances, especially in those regions. So I'm super bullish and excited about that. And then a, a final overview that I want to bring up before we uh, wrap this one up is the comparison of fees and basic uh, statistics between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Nano. Um, also go follow at transaction fees on Twitter, uh, provides daily updates on, uh, on those data and information. Um, for example, on Bitcoin to send one transaction currently costs $17.18. Ethereum $13.70. And I think that number is poised to go up as DeFi increases. In a nano, you have zero transaction fee in average. You have 0.24 second uh, finality, meaning that your transaction goes through immediately and it's also being received almost instant, right? Um, 1.1 million transactions are currently going through the network on a daily basis, I guess. And as opposed to, for example, Litecoin, which is a hard fork of Bitcoin with four times performance improvement, has four times faster blocks, but um, still it is not um, nearly as used as Nano and is also, um, um, yeah, it, it, transactions are still settling much slower than on Nano, right? So in my opinion, Nano is the ultimate uh, payment coin from that view. Obviously there are others in the field as well, right? But I think Nano has so much more upward potential from an investment thesis because it is still far outside of the top 20, right? But I think eventually it might get there um, if the community keeps growing, if the adoption keeps going up. And I think um, one guy who is currently looking for a currency to implement into a running business and accept cryptocurrencies as a merchant is probably Elon Musk, right? So this might be something that he could look into um, instead of focusing on Dogecoin, which is a highly centralized um, um, coin in terms of distribution, plus it doesn't really have a competitive edge like Nano has. So I think that might be something that he would be interested to look into as well. Having that said, I think Nano is definitely a project to keep an eye on, to keep um, studying about and to put in your watch list. Um, let me know what you think about a project and I'll see you guys in the next one.